hey y'all, it's Legs. And I'm going to tell the story about how I got started in nails and how I became Lady Legs, the owner of this beautiful studio that you see here in this video. So I always loved painting my nails like as a little kid. It was my favorite thing to do. I had the little book that had like the nail polishes on one side and the designs on the other. It was like, I remember there was like a cow design, watermelon, which was like always, I was always really good at watermelon. And maybe I should do watermelon nails to like fit this vibe. This is very watermelon-y. Um, it had watermelons, cow print, leopard print, clouds, like other really easy stuff. And you use like a toothpick basically to do the art. And so when I first learned how to do nail art, I only used like toothpicks or like I would go to the like the art store like Michaels and buy brushes and use them with my nail polish or I would buy those nail polishes that had like the the liner brush the really really thin brush and I would cut it down even more so I could do designs but like my early early nail art stuff when I was in college and high school was done with strictly only polish like my first gel at home Manny I went to a nail store in LA with my best friend and I bought like a gel lamp from Amazon that had like a European out plug on it. I had to go buy like the converter. I had no idea what I was doing and I was doing it like way too thick, like regular polish. And they were just like peeling right off. Like I could not get it right. I could not figure it out. It was terrible. And I didn't have rubbing alcohol to like cleanse the nail after to get the sticky stuff off. And I used vodka. Like, okay. I had no idea what I was doing. Like all throughout high school, I went to boarding school. And so all throughout high school, I painted my nails probably like every day. I would get in trouble all the time from my dorm parents. And they'd be like, Allegra, the entire hallway smells like acetone and like a nail salon. Like you have to stop. And like during study hall, you're supposed to study. And I wasn't studying, obviously. And they knew that because like the smell was everywhere. <laughs> like I remember one time I bought like a at home acrylic kit. And I tried to do my own acrylics in my dorm room. And it was like the stinkiest, messiest project ever. And it was terrible. But my nails always looked really good. My roommate and I were obsessed with nail polish. Like, mod about you specifically. That one time we ran out and we literally tried to recreate it by mixing like whites and pinks and purples all together so that we could make the perfect mod about you because we ran out of the color. And we lived in like Ojai, California in boarding school. I don't even think Amazon Prime was like a thing yet. And if it was, we definitely didn't have it. But we basically had to recreate OPI Mod About You because we were so obsessed with it. And we would paint our nails like every day. And we would use like this crazy strengthener that made our nails like so strong and so long. And we were like obsessed with having our na nails natural, long, strong, and like light pink because we thought that it made us look really tan, which it did, but like whatever. <laughs> In high school, I would paint the nails for like prom. I would paint my friend's nails for prom or for like the shows that were happening like in the theater. I remember once the headmaster's wife went and like she took me to like the nail store and got all these like OPIs, which was like, OPI was like a big deal because OPI was like $9 a bottle and like Wet n Wild was like $2 a bottle. And I was in high school and I had no money. Like I was in boarding school. like. I had no job, I had no income, so like balling on a budget for real. And she went and got like all these OPIs and she basically told me that if I painted the nails for like the entire play, I could keep like one or two of the nail polishes. I think she ended up giving me all of them because like where else were they gonna go? But I did it, like I painted the nails for the play. And I don't even remember what the play was. It was I honestly have no idea, but I did it and it was, I, she gave me one of the polishes. So it was, just, it was really cool. Then fast forward, I went to college. I went to college for social work, family studies after changing my major probably like 25 times. Um, so in college, I painted my nails like every day, also with regular polish. And I have some of my old pictures that I'll like somehow figure out how to show like here or here or whatever of my like polish art that I used to do with toothpicks. And I would paint like my college roommate's nails and some of my friends would come over and they would get their nails painted. 
if they wanted, but my like my classes were Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday. And my whole college career, I managed to never have a Friday class. I never have a class before 10 a.m. Like, go me. But in college, I would go to class on like a Monday and like everybody in the class, teachers, students, everybody would be like, what's on your nails today? And then Wednesday would come in and they'd be like, okay, what's on your nails today? Like I wasn't doing my homework assignments, but they were like, your nails are done. Like priorities are super out of whack. Sorry, mom. Sorry, dad. But I just love nail polish. After college, in college, I learned how to crochet and I would make like these beanies and I would sell them around Tucson. I would make like cute little beanies, like whether it be Hello Kitty, bears, whatever they were, but I crocheted all the time. Like I've always loved DIY crafts and hands-on and using my hands to make things. I find it like so therapeutic and like I love being able to go somewhere and see something and figure out how to make my own version of it. Like that wall hanging, I saw a Pinterest picture of like a neon sign hanging over a bunch of yarn and I just decided to make this myself with the colors that fit my aesthetic and my vibe and the colors of the carpet match the colors of the wall hanging and the couch and it's like all very cohesive and it matches the space but like I made that and it took a long time and it took a lot of yarn and a lot of money but it's cool that I made that and that's one of a kind because I made it with my bare hands. I made that pom-pom pillow what else did I make in this little viewfinder? There's that there's that fur pillow. I made that. I went to Joann's and bought the fabric and sewed it. I have no way I'm not I can't sew, but I figured it out and I bought like the pillow filling. The like, you know, the fluffy stuff. I filled it myself and I sewed it up. And that was pretty cool. So I've always been super crafty. And when I used to make hats, it became like not fun to make hats anymore because once I had to make them for profit and people were like giving me customized orders and I couldn't just like make what I wanted to when I wanted to make it, it became not fun anymore. It became a job and I was like, I lost my passion for it. Once people were like, I want a purple and blue and blah, 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 and I need it by this day. It's like, it's hard to create art on a deadline. It's hard to create anything on the deadline for me, at least that's the person that I am. So I was super nervous about making nails a career because I was like, what if I end up hating it? Like, I love nail art too much to hate it in the future. So I never took it seriously as like a real job. It was always just like my personal hobby and like my own therapeutic thing that I would do, like my self-care thing. And so like I would paint my nails probably, God, like every other day. Or like I would spend, since I was using polish, I would spend like six hours painting my nails in my studio apartment in Chicago and like if one got messed up or if I finished and I was like these didn't turn out the way I liked I would take them all off and start over like psycho. I got really into right before I went to nail school I got really into buying like the full press on nails and I would glue them on and I would paint those because I didn't know how to do like acrylics. And when I first moved to Chicago, I didn't have a job, so I couldn't, like, go get my nails done. Like, go, I would normally go get my acrylics done, and then I would paint on top of it, and then, like, go back and get them filled. But I didn't have money to do that, so I would buy press-ons and, like, glue them on, and then paint on top of that. And that was, like, my go-to for a really long time. And then how I went to nail school, I was sitting at a bar with Rio, and we had just met, like... We had maybe been hanging out with each other for like a month, maybe max. And I'm sitting at the bar with him and I had just quit my job in an after school program. And I was kind of just like, what am I going to do? I don't have a job. My rent is way more than I can afford. Like I only knew him. I moved here knowing no one except for my family in the suburbs and my mom. Like I had no friends. I had no connections. I, and plus I've never worked a nine to five in my life. So I was like, I don't want to do that like that's not my path and I know that it's like how can I like be creative meet a lot of cool people and do something I love every day without having to like I don't know I didn't want to work a job I hated and so I was sitting at the bar Barrel House Flat on Lincoln Rightwood and Rio was working there as a door guy at the time it was like probably winter yeah because I started nail school in February so it's probably like January no, it was February probably, beginning of February. 
and this girl comes up to me and she's like, I love your nails. Where'd you get them done? And she's like looking at my hand and she's looking at my nails and she's telling me about like her nail experiences and how she cannot find a good place to get her nails done, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, I did them myself. And she's like, oh, cool. Like, can I come, can I come get them done with you? I'm like, no, no, no. Like I did them myself, like in my house. Like it's my, I just do them for me, like I, for myself. And she like, wasn't getting it. I was like, no, no, like I don't, it's not my job. Like I just do it for myself. And she was like, that's like a serious bummer because there's no one that does nail art like that in Chicago really. And I'm having a really hard time finding someone. So if you ever get into it, like, let me know. Like, honestly, I think about her all the time. Like, where is she? Does she know that I do nails now? Maybe she follows me on Instagram. Like shout out to you girl, because you planted the seed and people have been complimenting my nails forever. But like at this particular time, in the state that I was in, like her compliment triggered something bigger. So she left and, you know, Rio and I were kind of talking and he was like, why don't you go to nail school? Like, why don't you just do nails? I don't understand. Like, just go do it. And so I Googled nail schools in Chicago and I could only find two different schools and they were both kind of like meh. And, or I could go to Paul Mitchell or what's that other hair guy, Chikosi. I could go there and do like the full cosmetology, which is like $20,000 and it's mostly hair, which I have zero interest in. And then I would get like a tiny bit of nails, but it would help me get my license. And I was like, I really don't want to do that. I only want to do nails. So I found this like pretty sketch little school called, it was called Pink's Nail School at the time. It's called something different now. And it was on Belmont and Paulina in the back of a nail salon, like a super sketch nail, like the kind of nail salon that like you should never go to. It's like the kind of nail salon that literally gives out like $4 manicures, not really, but like $15 manicures. And you're just like, how are they making money? Like right when I started nail school, all the nail technicians that worked there like staged a walkout because they weren't getting paid enough. And so they basically would pull us from nail school and have us do people's manicures. And I had no idea what I was doing no idea what I was doing. And they'd be like, okay, we need you to give this like real paying customer a manicure. Like, we're not going to tell her you're a student. And I was like, uh, okay. But it basically forced me to learn. And I was super eager to get it over with because I didn't like being in the school. But all the other girls I went to school with, like thought I was really weird because I would have colored hair and wear weird makeup or I dress differently than them. And all I cared about was nail art and they just like did not care about me at all. They were just like, we don't like you. <laughs> like, We don't want to be your friend. Your nail art sucks. Like you're not shit, whatever. And so I just kind of like buckled down and I went to school every single day from open to close. There was no rules about how long you could go to school for, like what hours there was another, the other school you could go to, you only could pick two days a week plus a weekend. And you had to be there those days all day long. So you either did like Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And it was every Saturday for like three months. It's like, yeah, no, that's not going to work for me. So instead I went to this school and I just went every day, open to close, Monday, seven days a week, Monday through Friday, Saturdays and Sundays. And I would go all day long. And then when you had a certain amount of hours, you were allowed to get a job at a salon if they hired you knowing that you were a student. So... I went to Flirty Girl Fitness because that was the only place that I knew in Chicago that did nail art. And I had gone there before I got my nail license and I showed them my work and they were like, when you get licensed, come, come back. So I got my license or like almost got my license and I went there and I was like, I'm a student. I have this many credits. I'm allowed to work here and get the rest of my hours like if you want to hire me. And so basically my boss, Nikki, who was my business partner at Jules, like three years later, she gave me like a an entry exam essentially and had me do like one regular polish manicure, a gel manicure, a French manicure, do some nail art and a, like a pedicure. And I did all these services and then she would like critique me and like show me how to use things better because in school they really teach you like the super technicals of it, but not like the real life hands-on versions of things. So she kind of really taught me how to do things more efficiently for school for for real life and she hired me and so I started working as an employee at Florida Girl Fitness and I was there for 
I want to say like six months ish. I probably was there. No, let's see. It's February. I was there until like, I think um, until October, maybe even December. So I was there for like 10 months, maybe. But I think halfway through my time there, like in the summertime, I ended up getting a job at Salon 1800 and I worked at both places for a while. Salon 1800 was just like a little bit, Florida Girl was a good first job, but it was not for me. I mean, like, it was really loud. The environment was really loud. It was a gym, but it was also like a bar with alcohol and it was bachelorette parties. It was just kind of like, it was a lot of work and it was always really loud in there. That was like my number one complaint is like, I hated listening to daddy Yankee on repeat all the time. That was my only like real problem with it. And some people were really, really mean there. So I just wasn't in love with working there. And so when it, I remember that Nikki asked me like, what do you want? what days do you want to work next month? And I was like, none. And that was kind of like how I quit that place and worked full time at Salon 1800. Salon 1800 is like kind of a bougier salon in Chicago. Like everybody knows it. It's like high end, really nice. And I loved working there. I loved my boss. I love the people I work with. The clientele wasn't really there. Nobody really wanted nail art. And if they did, they wanted like a line or like a half moon the clientele just like wasn't really into like what I was doing. So I kind of hopped around to find like a place that I felt like I fit in and I never really found that. So then I was looking on Craigslist one day and I saw an ad for Sola Salon. I didn't quite understand what it was. It was like, it's like a communal workspace. Like you make your own hours. I just couldn't really understand it. So I, I like responded to the ad and I had Rio come with me. I was like, come check this place out with me. I'm not really sure what it is. Pause for sirens. Okay. So I was like, come with me. I don't really know what this place is. And I don't really want to get like car salesmen into this place. Like, I also don't want to go look at like a construction site of a building with like a strange man by myself like just uncomfortable please come with me so Rio came with me to see it I was on the second floor and I'm really glad he was there just you know safety reasons and just to see it to understand like what this place was and it was a shell of a building like it wasn't it was the construction was like hardly done they kind of had like drawings of where rooms were gonna be and it was like this room's already taken like the rooms that were taken had like X's in them and there was probably like 25 rooms. And so like most of the rooms on the windowed walls, it was like, like this was all windowed. And then there was like a little like five or six rooms in the inside, like a little diamond shape. And it went like around like this. So most of the rooms around the edge were taken except for one, suite 13 and 13 is my favorite number. I have multiple 13 tattoos because 13 is my favorite. I go with Rio and we see the space and Rio's like, he takes me into like the corner away from the guy after we walk around and Rio's like, you have to do this. This is the next step for your business. Like this is the place where you can like do what you want to do and have your own clientele and like start your business without all the overhead of starting your own business. Like you don't have to pay like city taxes and water and trash and electricity and Wi-Fi and this and that and this and that. Like you just pay rent. And that's it. And so he basically, Rio worked at a bar and he basically pulled out a wad of cash from his pocket and paid the guy the first like deposit, which was basically one week's rent. So one week's, one week's rent there was like $300 for the week. And so Rio pulls out 300 bucks cash and gives it to this guy. And he's like, we're in, we want this room, but we need to like, we don't want to lose it. So like, here's the money, but we need to go home and talk about financially if this is a thing. So the other people that are in the studio have been in the industry for 10, 15, 20 years and their clientele list is miles long. I'd been in the industry for three years maybe and my clientele was like this. Like my diehard, diehard clients were maybe like five. 
maybe five. Like, I don't even think I see any of those people anymore that I used to see at Slendine 100. Like, I don't think any of them are still my clients to this day. Like, that's how diehard, like, I didn't have legit clients. I, like, had no business doing this at all. I was not prepared for what it was going to take to do this. So basically, I emailed the guy and I'm like, we did the math and I'm not going to be able to afford, like, $1,500 extra a month. Like I just don't make that much money. Like I did the math and I was like, I would have to work seven days a week for like 10 hours a day. And I would have to be completely booked to make all the money. Like I would have to be booked back to back to back all day for seven days a week and not take any breaks. If I take one day off, like I'm not going to be able to make rent. It just wasn't going to work. So I come back, I go back to the place. He gives me back the deposit And he's like, we're really sorry to see you go. Like we really wanted nail tech. And as I'm walking out, he goes, if you have anybody in mind that you want to work with, you know, I'd be willing to give you guys a joint suite, even though he doesn't, they don't do that for like the smaller suites. You have to get a bigger one to be able to share with people, but they really wanted to have nails in the building. So he was like, I'd be willing to give you guys like one suite for the, like you guys can share the rent. And so I kind of went down the list of all the people I went to nail school with. I was thinking of who I'd want to go into business with. And my first boss, Nikki, I was like, I asked her if she wanted to do it. And I knew that she was kind of in a weird transition of like not being able to find a place that she felt like she could creatively do her thing. And so she went and checked it out with her husband and she emailed me and she was like, let's do this. Let's, we're going to do it. And like, both of us had no idea what we were doing. Like, we didn't know. We didn't know what we were in for. I mean, the amount of times I called my parents just like sobbing, like I've made a huge mistake. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know how to manage a business. I don't know how to do my taxes. I don't know how to make money. I don't know how to find clients. Like I had no idea what I was doing because I worked at salons that basically did all that stuff for me. They booked for me. They found me clients. They ran deals. All I did was sit there, do nails and get paid. And now I was the person in charge of doing everything. And it was so hard, but like so worth it. I mean, every negative experience is a, is a learning experience. And wasn't even all that negative. And when I was in the thick of it, I was like, how am I ever going to get out of this? Like, this is terrible. But now when I look back on it, it was such a growing experience for me. I didn't know what I was doing. And now here I am. Like, I couldn't have asked for a better situation. Like, this space is amazing. And it's all mine. And like, I created this with my hard work. And I'm really proud of myself for that. I've made it a really long way. So now here I am, my own studio. And That's my nail story. I feel like I should also add my lady leg story. Legs has been my nickname my entire life, like forever. Uh, My dad calls me legs or leggies. My uncles call me leggies. My family, everybody in my life calls me legs or leggies or legra. My screen name was legra baby when I was like 14. So like, it's just, that's what people call me. And so I used to, my nail name used to be Nails by Legs, but like legs can sound kind of porny. So people weren't really understanding and I had to constantly explain to people like, why legs? Is it because you're tall? I'm like, no, I'm 5'2". Like, no. So I was out one day with a friend and she kept introducing me to people and she was like, this is my nail lady legs. This is my nail lady legs. And then I just kind of like abbreviated it because I first I was going to do nail lady legs. But then I was kind of like, that's too many words. So I just made it lady legs. And then I kind of like it. I mean, it does sound kind of like porn star like, but I'm okay with it. I think I'm okay with it. Lady legs. So yeah, I've got my little card right here. And it's so cute. And the second half of this video is going to be a studio tour. So stay tuned. So when you first walk in my room, this is the view. I have my nail table over here. All my polishes are there. This is filled with whatever. This is like when I created my room, I really wanted it to be like a lot of little corners where you could take nail selfies. So I'm going to start over here. These are all the cuticle oils that I've made. 
with essential oils. The business cards of like all my people. I got the sticker from Daisy Natives and I wanted it to be like a place where you could take a nail selfie with like a cool background. That was my aesthetic and my goal. These flowers are from my wedding. I bought all dried flowers and I had them all over. This was, these were part of my um, bridesmaids bouquets. The, like little white and the red with the lavender and the eucalyptus. My olive and June collection that's just out on display because I don't use regular polish on clients, but I love Sarah Gibson Tuttle, so support sisters. Swatches, which are truly, truly outdated. I need to update them, but swatching is the hardest and shittiest thing to do. It sucks. My battery's gonna die, BRB. So where I left off before my camera died was the rug is from World Market. It was probably $100. I got my plant from um, Home Depot. It's made a long way. It was dying in the first like week and now it's thriving. This couch is from Amazon. It was probably like, hmm, like 150 bucks. That pillow's gifted. Who knows where that's from? I made that one. Five below, made pom poms. And then like the amazing neon sign with all of the yarn. made those here's like my glitter wall all of the glitters i have my olive and june beauty tea some vodka some nails a wedding pick or two and then i put like shelves in the corners of the room also my moon mirror I love this. I got this frame at Starbucks, so random. But the picture in it is me sitting on the floor, probably like right here, surrounded by nail stuff, unpacking when I was first moving in. One of my many like 3 a.m. nights setting this place up. And then this one is the last picture I ever took in Sola of just like the blank walls. I mean the blank walls, the jewels wall and all that. We were super sad to leave that. Another wedding pick, another wedding pick. One of my favorite things about this space is this huge window. My view is really funny. I stand here and I watch the parking lot drama because you can't park in this parking lot unless you're going to the bank and people park all the time to go to Xfinity. So this guy sits in his car. I don't see him right now, I don't see his car. But like that car has like a little Thing on the window and they'll boot your car if you walk into Xfinity and you park in this lot and I'll sit here and like listen to all the drama and watch people get mad. These are my Rainbow Symphony films. When it's sunny, which it hasn't been in forever it feels like, it creates rainbows in the room and it's so pretty. The length mirror because I wanted like a selfie mirror. I wanted people to be able to come in here and take a cool selfie and have the neon in the back featuring my new hair which I'm not into. This is my work, my work outfit. Just nail dust on me. Yeah. Then I made this wall because I wanted a chalk wall just like my old place had, but I'm obviously not as good of an artist as Maggie. So that's just what it says. And it says, you look gorge. So when you wash your hands, you can check out yourself. Michael Scott. And here's the good stuff. The nail art. These are all my like foils stickers. I've got like Chanel stickers, more Chanel stickers, these like, shells more Chanel stickers. I have some really cool Louis Vuitton ones somewhere in here. Just so many like stickers and films and whatever. Oops. This drawer is all Mylar papers. Foils and Mylars. My all of these. This 
one's really pretty. I can't wait to use this one one day. It's like a green and purple. This is miscellaneous. All of these little papers, these should actually be in this drawer. And these are all like little studs. These are circles. I've got chromes in here. These are for nail art trays. All different kinds of studs. I've got hearts back there. Look how cute these little fruits are for the summer. So, so, so cute. And then more stuff. Just stars. These are both stars. Dried flowers, mylar, hoop tape. So much stuff. Stars, more stars, dots. And this is where I keep like my charms. Let's open one of these up. Look at all of these charms. She seashells. That's nothing. That's supplies. And I have my nail desk with all my supplies in here. All my majors that I use daily. Faces, top coats, my nudes. All my good stuff is right here. Two phones. Picture of Rio. And then Lauren gave me this unicorn lamp when she moved out of her old apartment. And now that she's back, she's still not getting it back because he's a part of the, the aesthetic here. And then here's where all the goods are. D&Ds. And we've got Jellish. And we've got LaChat. And we've got mood la chats, all the color changings, IBD, bio seaweed. These are all my color clubs from when I used to test with them. When I first got into nails, I helped Color Club develop their gel line because I worked with one of my clients from my first salon job, Santin 100. Her husband was a scientist, a chemist for a gel company, and they developed this line of polish. So I helped them. So I would take clients and I would test the polish on them and they'd have to tell me, does it last overnight? Does it last two weeks? All this stuff. So I got the whole collection from that, which is pretty cool. Then all the SEs and C and Ds. These are all my art inks and my builder in the bottles. And then the rest is just supplies. And I saved this from Jules. We got rid of all of the furniture basically when we moved out, but this shelf was one of the shelves that Nikki and I had made at the old salon because nails are jewels, not tools. And I wanted to keep something to like remind myself of jewels and just something I thought was cute. And so I brought this here and we hired this guy to make it in his basement, I think. And I love it still. And then here's my monthly manis up here. They change every month. And that is the whole thing. That's it. That is the Lady Legs tour.